on today's edition, I'm talking to a man who is ageless, possibly even a wizard. It's the almighty Bobby Lashley. How are you doing today? Fantastic, man. I appreciate you having me on. It's a pleasure, and I think everyone wants to know, what skin cream are you using to keep your face <laughs> ageless? Because there's a picture of you from, say, 15 years ago, and a picture of you today, and, uh, you know, it's hard to tell the difference. You know what? I, I think I fell in a time warp because there was some time in there that I something happened, and then I was back in the WWE. So between those 10 years or 15 years, I really don't, <laughs> I really don't know what happened. Now, but to be honest, I, one thing I always say is, since wrestling, what I try to do is I just I take care of myself. I mean, we all know good and bads, and I try to do more good than bad. Uh, I'm not a heavy drinker. I'm not, I'm not this and that. I, I I work out religiously. I mean, for the past shoot, thirty plus years, that I've, I've worked out, and I don't think there was a time that I took an extensive break. I mean, I'm always in the morning. I'll do some cardio. It's just it's just part of my routine. It's like brushing my teeth. I enjoy doing it. It's a it's a stress relief for me. It's um, it's getting my day going. It's motivation. It's everything for me. So I've always done that. So I take care of myself really well. And, and um, nothing special. I, I don't want to actually endorse a cream because if I do, I want to get paid for it. Of course. Of <laughs> course. So the Fountain of Youth, you will not tell us the location of the Fountain of Youth. That's what I've confirmed in this interview so far. I got it at my – I can't tell – because if I told everybody, then the competition would, you know – I think our truth also knows where that is because <laughs> same thing, ageless. Yeah, we're good friends. We talk a lot. <laughs> All right, fine. After this, we'll become good friends, and I can look as good as you someday. But in, re in wrestling, though, there are so many strange places that people can wrestle. Where is the strangest place that you've ever wrestled? Well, um, I did uh, the Jungle Lovers. They had a um, they had a big um, whatever. What was it called? It's their big deal out in the middle of nowhere. I mean, we, they brought us in. Uh, we sat in a hotel room until about midnight, and then we got picked up, taken out to a field out in the middle of nowhere. Uh, <laughs> and it was it was a crazy little sight. But, I mean, great show. Great show. Awesome fans. But um, it, was, it was a little bit out there. It was crazy. Yeah, I imagine midnight getting picked up and going to perform is a little uh, daunting <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> but but this, this – Friday, though, SmackDown, tribute to the troops. You are a veteran, and this is a huge event for veterans. How important is this to the WWE locker room, putting on a show for the veterans and, of course, the wrestling fans as well? I think I think some guys are more important than others. I think some guys understand the importance of, of doing stuff for the troops, but then some people that have been in the trenches that know the military, like I grew up in a military household. My dad was 26 years. My sister's. Uh, myself, we all went through the military, so um, it has a little bit of special meaning to me, as well as uh, a few other people that have been there, like Montez, one of my partners. Um, he he was in the Marines for a while, so just having the opportunity to tell boys and girls, they look, we remember you guys, we look out for you guys, and we still have heart for you guys, and we'll do anything for you guys. Um, so it's it's a really cool event and, and good opportunity for us to pack the stadium and just put on a good show for for the troops. Well, thank you for your service as well, because, it, you know, protecting our freedom is obviously very important to a lot of people. So I just yeah. want to say thank you for that. Truly honored. Um, though, recently, hell apparently has frozen over. You see CM Punk has returned to the WWE. What are your thoughts on this? Because it feels like this could never happen, say, you know, five, six years ago. And now here we are. I was in Chicago for Survivor Series and when that music hit, that building was shaking. What are your thoughts on this? I really don't know, to be honest with you. Um, I was actually leaving around the time when Punk was really starting to pick up a little steam. I mean, he was there, but he really didn't do anything at that time. And I know he had a big impact in WWE at the time, uh, in his time there. Um, I spoke with some of the guys that know him, got mixed feelings. Some people were very against it. Some people were, uh, you know, whatever. Um, but you know what? It's... It's a land of opportunity, you know. So if he comes back and he, and he helps out the show, I mean, that's the business side of it. I don't know. I don't really know for Punk too personally. And when I was fighting, he went to UFC. I put my money on him, um, so he does owe me a little bit of money. <laughs> <laughs> Twice, I was like, "Oh, he could do it. Come on!" I, oh God, I hope it wasn't a lot. <laughs> yeah, 
Uh, but I, I think I think one thing I think um, I hope the business is is about this as well as everyone else. I think the, for integrity purposes, I understand he has a big name. He's coming back and he's doing he's going to do some big numbers. But I hope they 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 make him kind of work for some of the stuff. I hope he's not one of the people that oh, okay he comes back we're going to win the rumble oh, we're going to do this we're going to do that. Um, I hope they give him an opportunity to kind of prove his loyalty to the business and some of the people in there, just to let everybody know some of the naysayers, some of the people that aren't too happy about him being there. I hope he has this opportunity to work his way back up to the top and 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 not just giving everything because maybe he negotiated a good contract that allowed him to do that. Yeah, second chances always are a good thing in life, but sometimes we can burn our bridges. So we'll find out what happens next. But right now, you know, he's selling out, uh, selling a lot of merchandise. So. So far, so good. We'll see what yeah. happens next. He is advertised for SmackDown this week on Friday, uh, turn to the troops. So we'll see what happens. And we'll see oh, the yeah. direction. Yeah, so what we're going to find out, uh, though, whose idea was it for you and the Street Profits to come together? And is B-Fab still on kind of like a training, want to join, not going to join? What's up with that? You know what? Um, I like the guys. I've always liked them. I've always liked them. Of course, I have a special place in my heart for the original herd business. Um, we, we, we fought and scraped and clawed, tried to get everybody together. Um, that was such a, such a special time for us. And we did it during the pandemic. That's the biggest thing. So when you talk about people coming back and everything like that, in my opinion, this is just me talking, um, we, we have to, we have to give some respect to the people that were putting in the work and the time that we needed it during the pandemic was a very awful time for everyone. And, um, the her business, we were running the show. We were doing everything. We were so popular. We never had an opportunity to be in front of an actual crowd, which kind of just ripped my heart out. And then um, and then all of us were there. So um, we always had that opportunity to get back. The powers of me just maybe didn't want it to happen. But um, during that time, when we talked to the to Street Profits about possibly doing some work together, and because I like the guys, I think they have a tremendous amount of potential uh, Montez, of course, being a former soldier, uh, the guys have great look. They have a huge amount of charisma, and I think sometimes you just need to help people out. You know, to help pull people up when they don't um, necessarily have the opportunity. So uh, when they split apart, you know, we just naturally came together. We started talking, and they just kind of like this. This is a good little group. Uh, as far as BFAB, I don't know. She's another person. You know, she has a lot of potential. I think the office really likes her. A lot of people have. Cause she's been putting in a lot of work. She's been working with Natalia. She's been working with um, TJ. Um, she's putting in some serious work. And I think that's what's cool about the the new kind of regime, I guess you would talk about right now. But give me some of these younger talent opportunities, the ones that actually are busting their butt. And you can see it on TV because you see different faces popping up all the time. Um, and I think PFAP is one of those. We're trying to find a place for her somewhere. If she has an opportunity to come with us, you know, kudos. I like her so far. I think she... It's an incredible talent. I think she has a lot of possibilities and, um, and, and a lot of potential. So we'll see. I mean, the, 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 that's, that's a lot of rambling, but at the no, end of the day, I love it. I, I love it. it. I think she is. I think she's awesome. I think that she has some, some great potential, but, um, my direct focus is on seeing those titles around the street profits again. I mean, they just, they, it would just look good. on We look, we wear black and gold anyway, gold titles. I mean, or the silver titles, we can we can we can switch. Things <laughs> well, yeah, we can change it up. Yeah, whatever needs <laughs> um, to happen though. But whatever needs to happen, they need to have those titles. Yeah, I'm so happy you brought up the Hurt Business because the Hurt Business is one of those groups that everyone adores and loves. And there's a picture of you with the World Championship and Cedric and Shelton the Tag Championships and MVP standing there as well. It is one of the best photos ever. And the fact yeah. that when you rolled into WrestleMania 37. They're, during the pandemic and half the arena was filled, the Hurt Business broke up before that, which suddenly a crowd was there and we couldn't get them in front of an audience. Though WrestleMania yeah. 37, you're the first matchup and then a thunderstorm rolling in and that delays the start of <laughs> WrestleMania. How are you feeling backstage? Because I imagine as you're preparing to go out there, you're getting pumped up, you're getting ready, you're getting in the zone. And now you have to kind of suddenly cool down and get back up again. T tell me through that process because that was a crazy thing. Because on Peacock, they deleted the first 20 minutes of WrestleMania. You and Drew backstage doing like interactions before the match. That doesn't exist. Oh, damn. Well, um, 
I tell you what, for us, it didn't matter. Yeah. I like there was no there was no getting up and getting back down. It's WrestleMania. I was always up, and I was already up, and and it just kept going farther, further, and further. Me and Drew, we were about to fight backstage. I mean, <laughs> there was no way we were gonna let this thing get. If they would have started raining, we had to just start fighting our way out to the ring. And just kept fighting then. And that's what I like about him. Drew is that guy. And I was already that guy. You know, I've always been that guy. So it was a little crazy. But at the same time, at the same time I mean, it made it special. You know, yeah. <laughs> with, with the pandemic before and everything else, it was like there's no way that that was going to just go off perfect. It was like sunny for the entire summer right before WrestleMania. Boom, there, it's, there we go. It's I crazy. It was a crazy evening. And then, you know, this past year, you weren't even on WrestleMania. And yeah. to me, it was crazy because you had a storyline with Brock Lesnar earlier in the year and then suddenly rolled into WrestleMania. No, we were thinking Brock versus Bobby WrestleMania type match. Why weren't you on the card? And frustration obviously must have been filling up your mind and body because I'd be pissed too. I mean, I was beyond disappointed. I'm not going to say pissed, I'm going to say disappointed. Hmm. Because I am a kind of chill person. Um, and the thing that disappointed me the most is all the work that I put in. You know, we have live events throughout the year. I'm on all of them. Then um, every one of the pay-per-views, we had some mix-ups and, and change-ups. And then next thing you know, I'm, I'm pulled off the biggest show. It sucked to me because, you know, my kids, I have my kids. The kids watched me go. And leading up to it, I was just like, you're like, yeah, we're, we're going to WrestleMania. And I was like, look, um, yeah, if you guys want to go, I just don't know if I'm going to do anything there. And all the while, it was like, there's no way that's going to be. I, I have to be in WrestleMania. I've been in every WrestleMania in my entire career with the WWE. I've always been there in a spotlight match. I've been in every pay-per-view, everything. And then I get closer and closer. And then even the first day, the first day, my kids are calling me up that night. And they were like, hey, Dad, are you going to be on? Because I would have just flew them right in if, if I was going to be on. They had some stuff going on. And then the next day come around, and then I saw so all kinds of mix-ups, you know, just random people jumping in there. Yeah, it's it's it, to me, it was it was it was probably one of the lowest points of my career. Um, and I think right now, I I kind of want to make a change. And this is why when I I kind of took more of a heel approach there for for a while afterwards. Because I needed some redemption for that. And I wanted to take out some of these guys. You know, we I, I left the company for a little while, never said anything bad about the company, never tried to put down the company. Came back after doing some independence and, and just getting some different work rates, working with some different people. Um, showed with success in other other companies yeah. and coming back and the things that I had to go through in order to get back to that chance of winning a world title. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing that being on my sisters, you know, all like a whole bunch of knots. It's just different strokes or different folks. And it just didn't make me feel too happy. But, um, besides the point, you know, we're still moving forward yeah. and I have a great opportunity now, which I'm trying to focus all my attention on. And I, I'd like another world title run. I mean, I'm in great shape. I'm working my ass off. I'm building a good team. I'm working with other people, having good matches when I have an opportunity to have matches, but, um, I think that I, I should and could have another good title run. Agreed. I agreed. And, and you know what's funny is you brought up fan reactions and working the weekend shows. Um, over the weekend, videos have surfaced all over, you know, X or Twitter, whatever you're calling it, and yeah. everyone is chanting, Bobby, Bobby. You could beat up Rey Mysterio. You could beat up all these good guys. <laughs> the audience doesn't care. Have you reached a level, you think, of – You've been around for so long, and your body of work is so well put together that whatever you do, the fans are going to cheer you no matter what. I think I think part of it with me is I think people know that it's genuine. There's all kinds of other people that come into the business that play characters and everything like that. I'm me. Yeah. I'm me, and I've always been. You can see it. You can you can feel it. Um, wherever I go, you know, I meet fans and stuff like that. They see who I am. They know who I am. And I think the crowd is really starting to, they, they really gravitate to that. I don't have any, I, I, I've not been shoved down anybody's throat. Like if you look on our social media, you see maybe a rare glimpse of me here or there. So I'm not shoved down everybody's throat. Um, it's just, it's real. It's something real that, that I think the company really needs to to focus on and, and, and work with. Because 
it, it's real and you don't get that too much in this business. Well, I, I cannot wait to see what's happening next. New championship for you, world title. Also, if you win the tag team titles eventually, Grand Slam champion. But we got to wrap it up here, though, folks.